Greetings, it's Scott Griffin, your Swing Surgeon Director of Club Fitting Operations, and yes, it's time for the Doctor's House Call. We're actually going to finish up our series on club fitting today, and yay, I hear the uh, cries of jubilation out there from the troops. Uh, the one thing that we have not covered yet is, what is it boys and girls? If you said grips, you got it right. So we're down to the only connection that the player has to the golf club, the grip. That's the only thing you're touching. Uh, so when we get done with the fitting over in the studio, we come back over here into the main shop. And what I do is I hand them these two grips, identical grips, except they're different in size. Some people can tell it right off, some people can't. So what I do is I go through, um, a series of just handing them the grips and letting them see what feels best in their hands. Now, I know a lot of you are going to have a question, well, doesn't it matter? Not really. In spite of all the things and the stories that you've heard about grip size and what grip size does or doesn't do. Let's cover that. There's the old golf myth that too large a grip keeps you from being able to, to close your hand, get your hands pronated, and get the club back to square. Too small a grip makes you over rotate and over close the club face and hit hooks or what have you. Please, somebody, find me test data where it shows that too large a grip makes you hit a ball right and too small a grip makes you hit a ball left. It is just not true. If that were the case, baseball players would never pull a ball down third base. Tennis players would never be able to hit a forehand smash and put top spin and hit a cross court shot. It just wouldn't happen. And both of those instruments are larger than a golf grip. Now I will say this about grip size and how it can affect you. We're talking about grip pressure. Grip pressure starts in the hands, comes up and stops at the elbow. <clears throat> if you're using improper grip pressure, i.e. choking it, it can keep you from releasing the club. Now, you can choke a grip whether it's too big or too small. It's all about what goes on between the ears and what you perceive is the what you need to do as far as grip pressure. So if you know proper grip pressure, then you'll be able to take whatever grip that you have and hold it appropriately. So what is the determining factor for what size grip? You are. Simple. What size grip feels better in your hand? That's the size grip you should play. Now we'll go to texture. You've got uh, a combination of tour wrap and velvet, best of both worlds. You've got a uh, tour wrap grip, very spongy, very soft, somewhat tacky. However, I have found when it gets uh, moist or humid that that grip tends to be a little slick. You've got multi-compound grips. You've got cord under the left hand, soft material under the right. So once we get the size nailed down, then we start looking at the, the actual dynamics of the grip that fit you and your style of playing or your needs. Uh, I personally, if I'd been born in an article of clothing, I'd have been a sweater. Uh, my hands perspire heavily, especially when I'm in humid conditions. So I prefer a grip that's got some cord in it for a little extra tackiness and, and gripping strength so that the grip doesn't turn or slip in my hands. And another thing, I have actually figured out something that I found that I, that I think was very profound. Um, I know some guys will wear a glove until it absolutely falls off their hand. I can only wear a glove maybe two weeks uh, at most. Uh, sometimes in the winter I don't even wear a glove. But in the summertime, if I get a, a, a five or six rounds out of a glove, 
I've done well. <clears throat> Why? The, the grip or the glove stretches enough that it no longer conforms to my hand perfectly and I get a little bit of slippage in there and it allows the club face to turn. So think about that. You, you're one of those that wears a glove until it almost falls out and you notice your balls fly a little bit offline. You might want to consider changing glove more often. But when we digress, we're off the subject there. We're talking about grips. So uh, you get a grip based on what is comfortable in your hand as far as size and then get the texture that that just feels good, that fits your playing conditions or whatever uh, you can determine that would make a grip more advantageous to another, like maybe it's softer um, or maybe it's firmer, whatever the case may be, that's it, pure and simple. What is your preference? It's kind of like going and buying a pair of shoes. You know if it's right or not. You don't have to have anybody else tell you. So, grips. You're only linked to the golf club. Get what suits you. Don't let anybody else tell you that ain't the right grip for you. Well, that's it for me. Again, I've enjoyed doing this series. I, I hope some of you have gotten some good information out of it and learned some things. Uh, if you have some questions or something that you would uh, like to see covered on the blog, please feel free to email me or call me. Um, I'll be happy to address it. I try to stay in touch on the blog and can uh, answer some questions there as well. And if it's something that I think would be worthwhile, we'll, we'll just do a video and put it out on the blog. So until next time, this is Doc Griffin signing off. And as always, better golf is just a fit away.